Sunflower oil golden light and a staple in kitchens around the world is not without its share of controversy. With its widespread use, a long history of fraud has followed. Some claim that manufacturers dilute sunflower oil with cheaper alternatives, while others fear harmful chemicals might be used during the extraction process. To truly understand what goes into that bottle sitting on your kitchen shelf, we need to trace it back to its roots, literally. That journey takes us to the vast sunflower fields of Ukraine and Russia, which together account for nearly 60 to 70 percent of the world's sunflower oil production. But a couple of years ago, when war broke out, exports collapsed. Countries across Europe were hit hard by sudden shortages. This disruption forced many nations to start producing their own oil, giving them a long overdue reality check about supply chain dependence and agricultural resilience dot out in these massive fields. Sunflowers tower over the landscape. Their bright yellow heads slowly begin turning brown as they near the end of their life cycle. This change in color signals one thing to farmers. Harvest season has arrived. But sunflowers don't all dry at the same pace. Some are ready earlier than others. To get consistent oil quality, producers must wait for just the right moment. There's a simple field trick they use, rubbing the back of the sunflower head between their palms. If the seeds fall out easily and the back is completely brown, the flower is ready for harvesting. Of course, for the average onlooker, it's better to just enjoy the view and let the professionals handle the job. Harvesting sunflowers for oil isn't a casual task. It requires massive combine harvesters outfitted with special sunflower headers. These headers are designed to cut the stalks cleanly while minimizing seed loss. Unlike wheat or corn, sunflower seeds are loose and can easily fall out during harvesting. So the machines need to be both efficient and gentle. The headers lift the flower heads, slice the stalks, and feed them into the harvester. Inside, a built-in fan blows away lighter debris like leaves and dust, leaving only the prized black oil seeds. Sometimes, even before the machinery rolls into the fields, farmers use a process called desiccation, spraying the plants with a drying agent to help them ripen uniformly and reduce moisture. While it's not always necessary, it proves helpful in wetter climates to avoid mold and ensure a smooth harvest. But machines and chemicals aren't the only concern. Nature presents another major obstacle. Birds love sunflower seeds. In fact, they can be a nightmare for farmers. If harvesting is delayed, entire fields can be stripped by flocks in just a matter of days. These seeds travel through the internal processing system of the machine, where they're separated from the husks. By the end of the day, the once golden fields are left looking barren, littered only with broken stalks. Next comes transportation, trucks loaded, with freshly harvested seeds rumbled toward the processing facilities. But before these seeds can even begin to resemble the oil we use, they undergo a thorough cleaning process to remove dirt, debris, and impurities. Once clean, the seeds are roasted. This crucial step enhances their flavor, aroma, and oil yield. After roasting, the seeds are crushed using powerful grinding rollers that turn them into a fine, consistent paste. This process ruptures the seed cell walls, making it easier to extract the oil trapped inside. As the paste moves into massive mechanical oil presses, streams of light, unclear but precious oil begin to flow. Though still raw and unrefined, this is the first glimpse of the final product. Each step in the factory is executed with care to ensure the highest possible quality. With oil now extracted, it's time for bottling, but not so fast. The raw sunflower oil isn't quite ready for the supermarket shelf. First, bottles weather. Made from plastic or glass are molded, cleaned, and sterilized. They wait on conveyors as the oil undergoes refinement. Now, not all sunflower oil is refined. 
Some producers sell cold-pressed or virgin sunflower oil, which retains more nutrients, flavor, and color. With the refining process complete, it's time for final bottling. Thousands of bottles are filled within minutes, and not a single drop is wasted. Caps are pressed down in one swift motion to preserve freshness and prevent leaks. Then, labels are applied some simple and minimal, others bright and bold, each. Turning an ordinary bottle into a familiar product you'll recognize on the shelf. And just like that, the journey is complete. The next time you reach for that bottle, remember, you're not just cooking with oil, you're pouring a story of soil science, survival, and innovation right into your pan. Round, golden, and coated in a sweet layer of glaze or colorful sprinkles, donuts with a hole in the middle have become one of the world's most recognizable and beloved treats. They're not just visually appealing. They're a quick, comforting breakfast option and an indulgent snack enjoyed by millions. In the United States alone, Roughly 10 billion donuts are consumed every year, a number that speaks volumes about their irresistible charm. Frustrated by fried dough that cooked unevenly crisp on the edges, but raw in the center, he used the lid of a pepper shaker to punch a hole in the middle before frying. That simple adjustment not only solved the problem of raw centers, but also gave birth to the iconic ring shape that defines donuts today. A major milestone came in 1920 with the invention of the first automatic donut making machine. By the 1960s, advances in production technology allowed factories to churn out thousands of donuts an hour. Today, state of the art facilities powered by computer controlled machinery can produce up to 3,000 donuts per hour, delivering them fresh. To over 25,000 locations across the United States, the ingredients are straightforward but crucial to the donut's signature texture. The yeasted flour provides the structure. Sugar adds sweetness and aids fermentation. Yeast makes the dough rise and turn fluffy. Powdered milk enhances flavor and tenderness. Eggs add richness and binding power. Vegetable oil keeps the dough moist, salt balances the flavor, and water activates the yeast and blends the mixture. These components are poured into industrial mixers and blended at high speed. In precisely measured ratios, the resulting dough must be smooth and elastic, not too sticky, not too dry to ensure it will hold its shape and fry evenly. Once mixed, the dough is transferred into a large hopper and allowed to rest for about 10 minutes. This resting phase allows the yeast to begin activating, enhances the dough structure and makes it more pliable. From it travels through a series of rotating rollers that press and flatten it into wide smooth sheets. These dough sheets are then guided onto a shaping conveyor where automated cutters stamp out perfect rings, six donuts at a time. The round cutouts and the dough from the center holes are separated and recycled into future batches to reduce waste. The iconic hole isn't just for aesthetics. It ensures the donuts cook evenly during frying. After shaping, the donuts are transferred into a proofing chamber. This large temperature and humidity controlled space allows the yeast to continue fermenting the dough over a 30 minute period. Inside the chamber, warm, moist air encourages the yeast to consume sugars and release carbon dioxide, which forms tiny bubbles in the dough. These bubbles make the donuts expand and become light and airy. Once proofed, the fluffy raw donuts proceed to a stainless steel fryer filled with around 130 gallons of hot canola oil. Canola oil is preferred for its stability at high temperatures and neutral flavor. Because of the air bubbles created during proofing, the donuts float naturally on the surface of the oil. They're fried for about 45 seconds on one side before, being flipped by a rotating mechanical arm to cook the other side. After another 45 seconds, they're golden brown and ready to leave the oil. The donuts are then lifted out and allowed to drain removing any excess oil and preparing them for their sweet coating. While still warm, 
The freshly fried donuts glide beneath a flowing curtain of glaze, a warm mixture of sugar, milk, and water that clings smoothly to their surface. This process gives them their signature glossy sheen and deliciously sweet exterior. After passing through the glaze curtain, the donuts travel over a vibrating conveyor, which gently shakes off any excess glaze, keeping the finish clean and uniform. These donuts bypass the glaze curtain and are instead dipped by hand into an array of flavorful coatings like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, or specialty frostings. They're then sprinkled with toppings, ranging from rainbow sprinkles to crushed, cookies, nuts, or even bacon. These toppings add not only visual appeal, but also extra crunch and complexity to the flavor profile. Children, in particular, are drawn to the fun colors and whimsical decorations, making these donuts a hit across all age groups. And that's the full journey behind how classic donuts are made. From the invention of the iconic hole in the middle, to the industrial precision of modern factory stores, to the artistry of toppings and flavor. The next time you bite into a warm, sugary donut, take a moment to appreciate the incredible process that brought it to your hands. It's not just fried dough, it's a carefully crafted piece of edible joy that's been perfected over more than a century. Tucked away in the middle of America's candy aisle, nestled among chocolate bars, gummies and caramel delights, there lies one treat that stands out with its unmistakable yellow wrapper and audacious crunch, the Butterfinger. With its flaky, layers rich peanut butter flavor and smooth chocolate coating, it's become an iconic American indulgence. Here, the soil is sandy, the sun is generous, and the environment is ideal for growing the single most important ingredient, peanuts. Over four to five months, peanut plants mature quietly beneath the surface, where yellow flowers shoot down pegs into the soil, forming pods that swell with the unmistakable nutty flavor we all know and love. When the peanuts reach peak maturity, massive harvesting machines pull them from the soil, shaking off the dust to reveal clusters of earthy pods. These are then left to dry in the open air before being packed into massive trucks and sent off to processing facilities. But not just any peanut is Butterfinger material. The chosen few are sent to cracking machines that separate the hard outer shells from the edible golden kernels within. The next critical step is roasting. The peanuts are heated at high temperatures to unlock their natural oils and deepen their flavor. This process also helps remove the thin, red papery skins, which are blown away by powerful air jets, leaving behind smooth golden peanuts ready for transformation. Once roasted, the peanuts are blanched to process where the remaining skins are removed, and the kernels are slightly cooked to soften them just enough for grinding. These golden kernels are then ground into a thick, slightly coarse peanut butter, but this isn't the silky, over-processed spread you find in grocery jars. This peanut butter retains texture, flavor, and a natural oiliness that makes it ideal. Fo Butterfinger's unique filling. As this peanut paste is prepped, a second part of the process is already underway. The creation of the candy base. Giant stainless steel vats boil a mixture of corn syrup and sugar to precise temperatures turning the liquid into a golden bubbling mass. The peanut butter is layered onto the warm candy base, and the entire mixture is folded over and over again, creating hundreds of ultra-thin layers of candy and peanut butter. This lamination process is what gives Butterfinger its signature crisp. Flake texture, the one that shatters satisfyingly with every bite. These raw Butterfinger cores are sent down the production line where they're enrobed in a cascade of melted milk chocolate. The coating is even and glossy, achieved through an intricate curtain of chocolate that wraps each bar before it passes through a cooling tunnel to harden. What emerges on the other side is the complete Butterfinger. Crisp, peanut buttery layers wrapped in. Rich chocolate. The perfect ones are swiftly wrapped in their iconic yellow packaging. 
heat sealed and packed into boxes for distribution. Butterfingers are more than just a sweet treat. They're a product of agriculture, engineering, and precision of farmers in Georgia. Food scientists in sterile factories and workers along every mile of the supply chain. The next time you bite into that golden crunch, you'll know you're tasting the product of soil. Each flake, each bite, each crumb of peanut candy coated in chocolate tells a story that big in a world full of confections, Butterfinger remains distinct, proudly crunchy, and never soft. And as the classic, Slogan reminds us, nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates. Share your thoughts in the comment section down below.